Welcome back to the course. In this lecture, we're gonna be talking about options you have when setting up your server. Actually, in general, you always have two major possibilities – a physical server or a dedicated server and a virtual server. Let's talk more about physical or dedicated server. A physical or dedicated server is actually a dedicated computer with a server operating system and software bundles installed depending on a server's purpose. Most of the servers on the Internet are rather powerful computers and they have those powerful hardware behind them. Fast um, multi-core processors, a lot of gigabytes of RAM and so on. But such a powerful hardware is not 100% needed for a server. It all depends on your purpose. My very first dedicated server I set up for a hosting was an old PC with AMD 2 GHz processor, 2 GB of RAM and an old 160 GB of HDD. And this server was powerful enough to run hosting for 10 clients with small business websites. So, just to sum up, a dedicated server is a physical computer that acts as a server. Let's move on to virtual servers. A virtual server is a virtual machine, an emulation of a particular computer system sold as a service by an internet hosting service provider. To be uh, concise, a virtual server is a service. Virtual server runs its own copy of an operating system and customers have super user level access to that operating system instance, so they can install almost any software that runs on that OS. For the user who is an administrator of the virtual server, there is almost no difference between the physical server and a virtual server. Virtual server feels like and acts like a physical server, despite the fact that it is not a physical server. So <laughs> I will not confuse you no further, let's just compare these two types of servers. Physical server. What benefits does it provide? Physical server has uh, more computational powers. That's obvious. Physical server uses all powers of CPU it has. Usually physical server has more HDD or SDD storage. That is also because it uses all the storage the computer has. You have total control over data, software and hardware. You can add hardware and software, you can take something out of the server and so on. You own all the resources of the computer, which results in better scalability and reliability. And for you as a future server owner, the huge plus is that you can use your old PC for your server. You can take that old hardware you no longer use for your personal purposes or for your work and install Linux on it and use it as your web server, a file hosting server and so on. We'll talk about it later. Okay, and what are the cons of having a physical server? The first and the most obvious one is that you need a dedicated computer. You need that computer to set a server on it. You also need a fast internet connection and a static IP address. There is not much sense in configuring your own server and setting it up and pull all this effort into this work. Uh, just to figure out that your computer can't communicate with other computers, other servers on the Internet fast enough. Why you need a static IP address? An IP address is like unique phone number of your computer, of your server. So to get access to your server from the Internet, from outside of your local network, uh, you need your server to have a unique static IP address. And this service is usually additional and is paid additionally to your internet provider. So you need to figure it out. You may contact your internet provider support and ask them, can you have a static IP address and uh, how much will it cost? Okay, and other downside of having your physical server is that it 
actually consumes electricity and it needs a backup generator or a backup battery if uh, powers go down and it also needs cooling if taken seriously and also if you live in a hot area or if you are planning to run very high demanding applications on your server which will load your central processor to the top you will obviously need to cool it down usually a basic air conditioner does it well but you need to have it near your server okay and now let's talk about virtual servers Virtual servers are usually more cost-effective, just because they cost much less for you to start them. You have no hassle with infrastructure, with electricity, with cooling and so on and so forth. You don't need an internet channel and IP address. You actually need it just to control the server, but you don't need to provide this sustainable internet channel and to pay for, for a static IP address because your provider does it for you. Usually you don't need to actually install the operating system on your virtual server. Your provider will give you a pre-configured bundle which you will just choose and your provider will install it for you. So you get a fully configured service with a blank operating system running on your virtual server from the start. And one major plus of virtual servers is that you often don't need to worry about backups. Backups are also usually included into the service and uh, you don't need to buy the second hard drive to back your server to the cloud, which you will also pay for. This is all done by your provider for this monthly or annual fee you pay them. But virtual servers also have their downsides. They are usually less powerful, as it may depend on the workload of other instances on the same hardware node. Several virtual servers run on one hardware platform, on one actual physical dedicated server or computer. And if other instances run some demanding applications on them, other instances which run on the same node have obviously less free resources they can use. Okay? You don't control hardware and data channel. This is obvious. This is the matter of um, information security and the flexibility of your system. But you have no control over the hardware and you have no control over the data channel. Data channel can be encrypted from you to the server and vice versa. But this is it. Usually no more control is available to the user or virtual server. The main downside of this service is that providers lay limitations on how you may and may not use virtual servers you rent. They have rules, they don't let you use some services, some of them tell you not to set up email service uh, because they're afraid you will uh, send spam. Others tell you not to use BitTorrent services and you can't use BitTorrent sync on them. So before choosing the virtual server provider, you need to read the rules carefully and understand what you can do and what you cannot do with your future server. I want to stress that here we're comparing physical servers with uh, small virtual servers, which are more affordable for a regular user, which costs less $100 per month. Usually such instances uh, cost $5 to $20 a month. I stress it because uh, instances which are uh, over $100 per month, uh, they could be more powerful than your old PC you maybe will be using for your server, and they can be more powerful than a new regular personal computer. Okay, let's move on. Now it's time to go back and think what type of server will you choose, a physical, a dedicated server, or a virtual server. Please, I encourage you to use the infographic which is available for download in the supplemental materials to this lecture to make your choice easier. Choose wisely and see you in the next lecture.